Good morning, homesteaders. It's good to be with you again. Today I want to have just a little chat about something that's been on my mind. I get so many emails and letters from all around the world asking, how do we do this Christian homestead, this Christian community thing? How do we do that? Uh, if you will send me a note, I have some prepared materials that I send out that explain how we put together a community and how it worked. So we're trying to make it easy for you. It's simple, but it's not easy, I should say. You can't make it too easy because you're dealing with people. But we have found some methods that really work well. But I was sitting around because I, I, it's always on my mind because I get so many correspondences about Christian community. I was thinking, what has made our personal Christian community, and this started about almost 10 years ago now, Mary Lou, my wife, started our house church, and we used the Luke 10 model, and you can look that up at lk10.com. That's the house church model that we used, and as we developed our house church, the community formed and shaped and came together. And we've been very successful with that little house church. We've been together for 10 years. It's still going strong. Uh, Mary Lou has passed away and another one of the wives has passed away. So it's not a very large group. That's one of the things we talk about is that you need to keep the group very small. Otherwise, it becomes a logistical nightmare. So I was sitting around thinking, what, what makes our group work? And what is really the thing that you need to make a community click? It's something special that happens. It happens, of course, with the help of the Holy Spirit. But there are things that we can do. And as I was thinking, there was one trait that seemed to go through our entire group. And that is what I'll call radical hospitality. Every single person in our group practiced radical hospitality. What did that look like? For one of the couples, they have a beautiful home and it's just a particularly beautiful setting. And so people are always saying, hey, could we do our wedding here? Could we, you know, have a, our family come here and enjoy this? And they always say yes. Now, this is a lot of trouble. This is what I'd call really radical hospitality. You basically turn your life upside down and your home inside out uh, just to help somebody else. That's what we're talking about here. If you're going to have a community that draws people near it, that radical hospitality is important. Another couple in our little house church basically uh, provided a place for Mary Lou and I to live as we were building our homestead, they're in town and we're out here 50 miles, we would stay at their home for days on end. They'd put us up, they'd feed us, and that's what they did for everybody that I know. So many people, they love to cook, they love to have a lovely meal spread out on the table. Those forms of radical hospitality are the glue that put together a real community. They're simple things that almost anybody can do, but it takes intentionality. It takes, I'm going to go to the trouble of providing this wonderful meal or this bed for my friends to sleep in because they need it, that kind of hospitality. Another couple in our church, I don't think they've ever turned anybody away. Their home is a revolving door constantly. And I'm one of the people still that benefits from that because as I say, my homestead is 50 miles from town and it's just enough where it's difficult for me to drive all the way in, do a whole day's work and then drive all the way back. I get really tired and they say, no, just come over and, and use our guest room. And that kind of hospitality makes it so that I can do my ministry. So, folks, this is such a simple thing. 
on the surface. What it takes, though, is a lot of energy on the part of the person providing that radical hospitality. Uh, yesterday, I had a, a group of friends come out, and so I personally got to go through the, the rigmarole that goes with having people out and, and preparing for them and being hospitable to them. So what did that take? Well, for me, you know, I had to clean up everything, you know, just wash the house down. It took hours of work. And every time that you experience this kind of hospitality, someone has done all that work that took a lot of time and a lot of effort. So it's a gift that they're giving to you. And it's that gift on which you can base your Christian community. So it's simple, but it's not easy. There are times when you're just saying, I'm tired. I don't feel like cleaning up the house. I don't feel like having these folks come over and staying until the wee hours. I don't feel like, you know, changing the sheets so that they can stay over tonight. If you're going to experience community, you're going to have to put the energy into it and go to the trouble. Simple idea, my friends. I hope that that will give you some encouragement. If you have the gift of hospitality, you're well on your way to being able to be a very important part of a Christian community. Thanks for watching. Keep your eyes on the sky and your hands in the dirt. He's coming back soon, my friends. And that is what I'll call That is what I'll call, <laughs> just keeps going right on my mind. <laughs>